in today's episode we are going to go really deep with threat hunt and this is something like threat hunt maturity level 3 or even 4 also you can talk about so we are not going with some normal threat hunting where we target probably a hypothesis or a advisorial hunting no we are totally doing code base analysis we are going to identify outliners so what i have with me today i have a set of proxy logs and i don't know what kind of logs it is so what the things are looks like and how i should approach any hunt on top of it so when you are having in this point where you have a lot of data at your hand and you want to perform some level of hunting it called data driven hunting so we are going to apply some level of machine learning that we can call as isolation forest then z score and while we are doing all of this analysis with the proxy logs and proxy data without floppy data this is not gonna possible okay so i'll introduce you quickly floppy data so if you are dealing with something let's say like you know like blocked website or something let's say managing your multiple accounts you are facing ip bans you know how quickly you can get all this problem solved there is only one solution and you don't need a vpn server you don't need anything okay so i'll quickly let me introduce you quickly to floppy data okay so your trusted premium proxy okay and uh, there is a lot there is a lot so this solution uh, has millions of global ip addresses um, this is flexible proxy of course flexible proxy uh, solution if you see it has residential proxies it has mobile proxies it has data center proxies and the main feature is that the cost effective okay so if i scroll down here really quickly they are plan start with just peanuts okay so the mobile proxy is just like three dollar right um and you can easily get something you can easily get your mobile proxy with three uh, dollar similarly you can get your residential proxy or data center proxy based on your need okay and the main thing is that if you see the use cases okay so if you see what exactly they have they have if you are blocked in somewhere you are not able to access gmail tiktok reddit whatsapp linkedin you can readily get onboarded into floppy data and you can start doing all of your activities okay so what is what i am uh, recommending over here so i would highly recommend you guys to try out floppy data which is a most affordable and reliable proxy solutions that i have seen so far in my this 15 years of career whether you need a solid web scrapping automation or just a secure web browsing floppy data is your one solution so i'll leave a link in the description box below and the first link in the description box with my recommendation you are going to get uh, a lot benefits probably 30 percent or 20 percent benefits if you join right now with the link that is provided first in the description box okay so without wasting any further time let us start and jump into our jupyter notebook fire up our jupyter notebook and let's see how we can hunt if there is a data set which is probably a black box kind of thing and how you can hunt on top of it without knowing any advisory without having any hypothesis just like a black box and shoot onto it let's do that okay so i am here with my console and i am i have loaded jupyter notebook into that so if you guys are not familiar with jupyter notebook i'll encourage you guys to please check out threat hunt with jupyter series where i have plotted down a lot of hypothetical based queries hypothetical based hunting in jupyter notebook so i'll leave the link in the description hello and it is somewhere coming up in the card somewhere you can watch out that but here we are starting off with really some good level of analysis something like level 3 or level 4 as i have told you okay so what i'm gonna do right now so i'll create a python notebook okay so i'll quickly rename it as um, proxy um, outliner okay and i'll rename it um, now the first thing first what exactly we are trying to do over here okay that is the important thing to understand okay so i'll quickly create a markdown over here um, and i'll paste this okay so this is our objective okay so we are trying to identify anomaly in proxy logs 
we are trying to detect anomaly pattern in our proxy logs using z core that that's called z score and isolation forest and identify traffic spikes rare url access unused or unusual status codes and of course at the very end we are going to visualize our anomaly and export the result okay what is the hunt result at the very end okay so first thing first so what exactly we are going to do right now okay so the step one is of course we have to do the data loading okay we need to do we need to load up our data so for loading up our data of course first thing we are going to use uh, pandas library pandas as pd and then we are going to load up our file which is which is present in my logs folder proxy and synthetic proxy logs uh, csv okay so now if i do the quick data loading okay and uh, if you see this so i have this data with me okay and this is just a head of the data okay okay so the next step once you have loaded up your data and you can see there are some information which are coming so now i'll create up a new indentation over here so now we will need to do little bit of you know that we called as data cleanup or we can call also as a feature engineering okay so we are now going to use a numpy okay so i'll quickly import num pi from as np and we are going to convert um, the timestamp to a date and time format okay because if you see um, this is something like kind of a I, I believe it's a utc kind of a format okay so we are going to convert that into a data frame okay and then um, we are going to split it up with our day then url uh, length what is the url length that we have and of course what are the byte sent so what is basically basically the uh, byte sent and receive ratio okay so we are going to do some level of data engineering over here so if you see i am just taking this uh, uh, df array and i am converting it to a date time format from the raw timestamp format i am splitting up our day url length whatever the url length is over there and the byte sent ratio okay and then after that if i do a quick head so the difference if you see if you see there won't be much difference but what whatever was not there in the previous one now you have our day format okay so if you scroll the right hand side also you will see the byte sent ratio okay so what is the uh, receiving byte and what is the sent byte okay so now once you have also this so now there is a there is a thing in our machine learning that we called as z score okay so before even we uh, jump into any other uh, pattern okay so let us understand basically what is a z score right so team z score is something like uh, it's a statistical measure okay so the statistical measure that describes how far our data point is from mean of the data set in terms of standard deviation okay so now how basically a z score is calculated okay so if you see the z that is basically the score of it and if you mark it so we'll put it as x and then and then delta so where x is equal to is your data point okay so we will mark is as your data point okay now what is your mu over here okay so mu is the mean of the data set okay so i'll write it down here mean of data set okay and what is the sigma over here so sigma is the standard deviation okay standard de standard deviation okay so now what exactly um, uh, what exactly we are trying to do over here if your z equals to zero that means the data point is exactly at its mean okay so mean means that is the mu now if it is let's say greater than zero that means the data point is above your mean if it is less than zero that means your data point is below the mean okay now also there are some variables and there are some value that we put in if your z is equal uh, more than equals to three okay so that means a z core which is greater than three it means the data point is 
three standard deviation above of the mean which is considered as the outliner okay and now if for an example if your z is let's say uh, less than minus three which is a z score that is minus three considered is the lower side that can be also your outliner okay so now why the hell even we are putting z score in the ip request frequency okay so when we analyze the ip request frequency we want to identify if there is any sudden spike okay because we are analyzing uh, something like that is called a proxy log right so now if there is a proxy log and if there is something like sudden spike in your sent bike uh, or receiving byte and someone is aggressively requesting from a single ip address within a short period of time this could indicate a bot activity this could indicate a web scrapping or let's say something like dos attacks right so that's the reason when we are calculating the z score for each ip request frequency we can detect the request that is deviating from significantly from a normal pattern okay so now for an example an ip usually sends let's say 50 requests per hour okay but suddenly it's tried to send uh, 200 requests in 10 minutes which is likely to high likely to have a higher z score right which we call as a outliner okay okay so um so i'm not gonna explain the whole code for you okay but uh, if you are let's say if you are interested so um, you can reach out to us we have i'll talk about that later we have just launched a new complete new course as threat hunt professional where we are going to discuss all of these things in very detailed very very detailed not only something like this kind of normal hypothetical or ad advisorial hunting but also this advanced machine learning based hunting also okay so now uh, I have this uh, formula over here. So now if uh, you see I have one client IP which is sending two count request and Z core is 22 for me. Okay, so this is a outliner. So this is one step of it. So you can identify your outliner and in the whole set of logs you can readily now think this as a pivot point and then start off your analysis. Okay, so now what next what next also you can do now we are going to apply another um, formula we are going to apply another machine learning formula which we call as also a isolation forest okay so now isolation forest is something where you put up some value you select a feature for your anomaly detection it could be your request time uh, uh, request time that means your byte sent by byte received that is the transactional factor and then you can put it into a x uh, axis and of course you are going to put your outliner that times like where where exactly the number of uh, that factor like bytes sent and byte received that uh, ratio is higher considering the time format okay that we we can plot that up in the isolation forest okay so i have this uh, feature over here so now uh, these are quite straightforward now main fit isolation forest model this is the main factor that we generally keep on changing okay so the contamination this particular factor is very important for us to understand okay now contamination is the factor which is basically an anomaly so 0 0.05 that means 5% of the whole log that I have with me I am telling that 5% could be anomalous okay and uh, of course like uh, the random state is 42 many people have asked me that why you have kept like uh, you know random state 42 now remember this this is not something um, something let's say i have prepared okay so this is a quite quite older or it, it's it's a very older uh, concept also so in short 42 is just a common default for consistency nothing else okay now if you ask why 42 it's an arbitrary number but consistent it's a default seed value or magic number that comes up with the this programming so you are using some programming of course in machine learning right so um there is a associate there is a concept there is a book that is written by i think douglas adams uh, which is named as the hicker's guide to the galaxy and there he has coined this term called default seed and magic number where this 42 for a uh, consistency was fixed okay so that is the reason we have kept uh, this random state as 42 so you can change the value of course if you need but you have to be consistent throughout the code okay that we need to go for okay so if we 
type down this thing so if you see that these are all of your outliners that is coming up over here this is the timestamp from where the client ip it is sending the request these are the urls and these are the status code okay so now um if you want to plot it your whole data set into a graphical representation that's our next step that we want to do um, uh, for now so we are to prepare one visualization so i'm going to use seaborn and i'm going to use matplotlib um, or matplotlib whatever you can call it and now i am going to put anomaly in proxy log in terms of my x will be request time and y will be byte sent so there will be two colors that i am uh, putting out so if the there is outliner which is minus one i want to put it as blue and if there is something which is not outliner which i am coining out as one which will be in red color okay so now if you see this particular sucker over here and if i try to load it yes so here you see the magic so now all these logs wherever i have this blue these are outliners for you there is a quite a lot outliner right isn't it because this data that we are working with it's kind of a generated data is kind of a synthetic data that we are working with but in your real time environment when you dig up some logs and you try out this um you know uh, isolation forest formula you would see your outliner is very vibrant it's not so many outliners that you are trying to detect over here okay but this makes sense right so in the mean of so many blue dots you are seeing quite a quite a few um in sorry i i think i bossed up so while you see there are so many red dots which are normal logs for us you see few of the logs which are in blue format which is nothing but your outliner here that is coming up right so now how you can uh, also uh, drop this outcome as a csv format right so that also you might need to understand so what i am gonna do now whatever the outliner that i have i'll simply paste it and in the uh, csv format so now if i go back now you see there is a proxy outliner report has been created and these are all my outliners okay so now these are the byte sent ratio now this is your set so from the whole heap hop log if i want to show you i'm not sure if uh, i can show you that but let's try proxy log yeah so if you see how many lines of numbers of log i have here there are quite a lot 500 okay still it is very less considering a real environment now from 500 logs i have some only 25 logs which are outliner for me right so now you can probably do a manual hunt on top of it considering that you have some level of data which is already you know that is something bad or something anomaly which you haven't seen in your local data set right so this is the way that by which we perform our um you know advanced level of threat hunting and i believe guys this has been useful to you and this is not only the end right so as i mentioned we have just launched threat hunt professional uh, live cohort course and our certifications as well where we are going over like 40 hours of live class over a month uh, and we are going to explore a lot a lot of this advisorial use cases which are advanced advanced level use cases of course there will be mixed of normal use cases also where you are going to learn how to execute a hunt properly how to hunt on splunk how to hunt on elastic how to hunt on jupyter notebook within the code variable and of course you are going to learn a lot of this kind of advanced uh, um, hunting so today we have just scratched the surface and trust me guys there are a lot of data a lot of work has been uh, is being done on the back end to create this whole threat hunt professional course for you guys so if you are interested if you are uh, ready to join i leave the link one link in the description box below please feel free and drop uh, your uh, uh, you know your interest over there you can register so the class live class is starting from next month which is uh, third of may i believe you can check out the whole syllabus everything everything in detail in the in the bottom link section below okay so that's all guys for today i hope you have a enjoyed the session and i will see you guys in the next episode with the next awesome some more new topic stay healthy stay safe